In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to pre-process numerical data that will be used to train a Keras model on. So here, we'll do the pre-processing of the data, and then in my next video, we'll create and train a simple Keras model on this data that we process in this video. So to actually train a Keras model, we need a data set of samples and a data set of labels. So what are samples? Samples are the actual underlying data. So if you are training a model on economic data, housing prices, images, maybe text from a particular media source or anything, that is going to be your samples. Each individual item in that data set will be called a sample. Now, the labels are what they sound like. They're going to be the corresponding labels for your samples. So if you were training a model to be able to do sentiment analysis on text from a particular media source, then your labels for each sample of, from the media source is going to be positive or negative. Just for example, if you were training a model on images of cats and dogs, then your labels for those images would be cat or dog. Now the samples for Keras purposes need to either be in a NumPy array or a list of NumPy arrays and the labels need to be in a NumPy array. And now starting out with the data, you'll have access to the underlying raw data itself. So for like the sentiment analysis for the media sources that I mentioned, you would actually be dealing with the words from the sentiment analysis. But whenever you train Keras on that data, you're not going to be giving it the actual words to train on. You're going to have to do some type of transformation before Keras trains on it in order to make it be something that Keras is compatible with and that the net can actually learn from. So in this video, we're going to be doing a really simple example with numerical data. We're going to generate some raw data, and then we are going to do some pre-processing to get it in a form that Keras expects, and to also get it in a form that the net will be able to learn something from. Now here I have a Jupyter Notebook pulled up, and this is what I'm going to be using to write my Python code. If you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebook already, it is a scientific notebook that you can interactively code Python in. It has these cells here that you can run code cell by cell. You can also do some markdown like I have here with the text. So uh, it's a really good tool to use. I like it. I'll be using it in my videos going forward. You might want to check out their website to download it for yourself. It is free. You can use it as well to code Python or you can use a regular Python IDE. Now to get started with the actual pre-processing of the data, I am importing just three libraries here. I'm importing NumPy, uh, randint from random, and minmaxscalar from scikit-learn. Okay, and then I create two empty lists, one titled train labels, one titled train samples. So these are going to be the lists that are going to hold our raw data. So for my data, I'm actually going to be generating it here within this cell. Whenever you're training a model, then you are likely going to be actually getting real data from a source. But just for this example video, I'm generating some fake data. Now the made up story behind this data that I'm generating here is that an experimental drug was tested on individuals from ages 13 to 65. The trial had 2,100 participants, half of which were under 65 and the other half were 65 years of age or older. And what the trial saw was that 95% of the patients who were 65 or older experienced side effects and 95% of patients that were under 65 experienced no side effects. So ultimately what we want our neural net to be able to detect is whenever we ask it whether or not an individual is likely to experience side effects or not, it's going to be telling us yes or no depending on this training data that we're generating here. So I don't necessarily want to focus on how I'm generating this data here because that's not really what we are focusing on in this video. We're focusing on how to pre-process the data. And like I said, whenever you're training your nets, you're going to be likely getting your data already, your raw underlying data from somewhere. And even if you are generating it yourself, say you're going through some economic data and, and grabbing it offline or some media source text and putting it in text files, you're still not going to be generating it in this same way that I am for this particular example. So I don't think that there's a need to focus on that here. But to sum up, all this is doing is creating 2,100 examples and it's storing ages of individuals 
in this trained samples list and it's storing whether or not that those individuals experienced a side effect in this train labels list. So now just to show you what my sample data looks like, I have created this for loop here that is going to print all of the data in the trained samples list. So let's print that. Okay, and we see that this is just a bunch of ages that are ranging anywhere from 13 to 100 years old that matches the story that I set up for our example here. And I just realized that there was a small typo here. This is actually going to be individuals from 13 to 100 years old, and half of those individuals were under 65 and half were over. So just corrected that here. And now coming back to our data, we see that these ages do indeed range from 13 to 100 years old. So that is our train samples list. Let's look at our train labels. These are just going to be zeros and ones. The zeros are indicating that the individual did not experience any side effects and the ones are indicating that the individual did experience a side effect. We go down and you see we are converting both our train labels and our train samples lists into NumPy arrays. So why are we doing that? Because Keras expects number one that our training labels are in a NumPy array and number two that our trained samples are in a NumPy array as well or a list of NumPy arrays. So we're converting them both here. So at this point we have our raw data and in this form we can actually give Keras these samples and labels just the way they are. Keras will accept them because they are in the format of NumPy arrays that Keras is expecting. However, the net might not learn very much from this training data the way it is with numbers ranging from 13 to 100, so the neural net may have a really hard time actually training on that data. So to get the data in a form that the neural net would train more easily on, we are going to use scikit-learn's min-max scalar class. And what it's going to do is it's going to scale all of our data, which is right now ranging from numbers 13 through 100, and it's going to scale them all down to numbers between 0 and 1. So I create this scalar variable here, and this scalar variable is going to scale input in a range from 0 to 1. And then I'm going to create another variable called scaled trained samples and I'm going to use that scalar we created and call this fit transform function. And what this is going to do is actually scale all of that data that's ranging from 13 to 100 down to be between 0 and 1. And so I'm doing that here by passing in our trained samples array and then I'm calling this reshape function here, it's just um, a bit of a technical formality. That's only because this fit transform function doesn't accept 1D arrays by default. So if you have data that is one dimensional in nature, like ours is here, you need to reshape it to have a shape of minus one, one. And that's just, like I said, a technical formality for working with this function. All right, so now that we have scaled the data, let's iterate over that scale data and print what the results look like now. Okay, so we see, as expected, let's just give some perspective here. So if we scroll up here, we see 49, 94, 31. So if we scroll back down here, 49, 94, 31 now looks like 0 0.47, 0 0.60, 0 0.06. So at this point, we have generated some sample raw data. We have got it in the format that Keras needs to train on. And then we took it one step further and processed that data by scaling it or transforming it into numbers that were between zero and one so that the net would be able to make more accurate predictions on the data. So in the next video, like I said, we're going to be actually using this data to train a model on and see what type of results we get. So stay tuned for that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. Thanks for watching.